Greetings, adventurer. You've traveled far to be here. Welcome to the Armory. Gear up, adventurers. Today's episode will be a bit different from last week's, as Travis is here only in spirit. He's busy watching a show on Netflix called The Order. He's been talking to me about it at work, so I'm excited to hear what he has to say. So this episode will be a bit shorter. Actually, it's going to be a lot shorter, honestly. But there's some housekeeping that needs to be done, and then I'll delve into my real reason for today's episode. Something near and dear to my heart. Books. To get the housekeeping out of the way, our goal for this podcast and everything associated with it is just to have a community where we can talk about nerdy subjects, things that can delve deep into the fandom life. It's more than just us talking about Digimon, though we will talk about Digimon and going forward, Digitrash will be every other week. That way we can watch two episodes of the show to talk about them. But what I'm trying to say is that we want to talk about a whole mess of different nerdy topics, so if Digimon isn't your thing, that's okay. It's not the only thing we're going to be talking about. Now that that's out of the way, let me talk about books. I love reading. I cannot stress that enough. I spend probably more of my time reading than anything anything else. Not just books either. Fan fiction is my main weakness. I've been reading fic since, at the least, the very early 2000s. It's honestly been a while. Though, moving on. Oh, also, if I mispronounce any author's names, I do apologize. Anyway, one of the things I had to unfortunately miss this year was BookCon. If you don't know what BookCon is, let me take a moment to share. According to their website, it's a celebration of storytelling. BookCon is the event where storytelling and pop culture collide. Experience the origin of the story in all of its forms by interacting with the authors, publishers, celebrities, and creators of content that influence everything we read, hear, and see. BookCon is an immersive experience that features interactive, forward-thinking content including Q&As with the hottest talent, autographing sessions, storytelling podcasts, special screens, literary quiz shows, and so much more. BookCon is the ultimate celebration of books where your favorite stories come to life. It's in New York City, and a couple of friends and I had this really awesome adventure planned as it would have been our first time going to BookCon. Well, that didn't happen. Actually, we had a few book-focused adventures planned, none of which panned out this year. We were going to cosplay as a group for the release and book tour of Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Moss. That's back in early March when everything was beginning to fly off the shelves in stores and subsequently the time being essential took on a whole new meaning for people. That's probably the first event that I can recall that got canceled this year, leading on to BookCon itself being rescheduled and then eventually canceled physically. Now, they still had a virtual BookCon that took place, which I'm sure opened up a whole new can of accessibility for those that weren't able to go to the original event. It also wasn't just book-related events that, like a book tour or a convention that were taken off the table, but some books I was looking forward to also. The sequel to We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal, titled We Free the Stars, was delayed until next year, which I'm still looking forward to reading it when it comes out. However, it wasn't just disappointing news for books this year. There were plenty of exciting things that happened, too. Amanda Lovelace, the author of Women Are Some Kind of Magic, uh, that's a series. She released uh, the first of what I hope is a new series called Break Your Glass Slippers, For those of you interested in poetry, I would recommend that you check out her work. Of course, we got Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, but it was also revealed that A Court of Silver Flame will debut next year. For those interested, it's the next book in ACOTAR, which stands for A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's a really good series. We also got the sequel to Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan titled Ruthless Gods that I am currently working my way through on Audible. Honestly, there's been a lot more than I can possibly talk about in the time that I've got. I could sit here and discuss all the books I've read this year, whether they were newly released or not, but I'm not going to. Feel free to hit us up on our socials if you do want to talk more about books with me, though. However, I think one of the biggest, shocking maybe, news reveals came not too long ago, when Stephanie Meyer, that's the author of Twilight, 
revealed that Midnight Sun was going to be released in August of this year. For those of you unfamiliar with it, this is a companion novel to Twilight, but told from Edward's point of view, and there has been a lot. Let me stress that again. A lot of drama surrounding this book. Back in 2008, yeah, that's right, you heard me, 2008, she stopped working on it because there was a leak. Someone leaked her work in progress on the internet, and I don't blame her for being upset and having to take a very large step away from it. She then posted and left the 12 leaked chapters up on her website and walked away. Now, I have a conspiracy theory that I'm going to share. 2008 to 2020 is 12 years, and there were 12 chapters leaked. That's one year for each of the 12 leaked chapters. Now, that's just my theory, but come on now. I'm not here to talk about Midnight Sun, though. At least, not right now. I'm here to talk about Seasons of the Storm by El Casimano. The blurb on the inside cover reads, Choice number one, live or die. One cold, crisp night, Jack Summers was faced with that choice. Live forever according to the ancient magical rules of Gaia, or die. Jack chose to live, and in exchange, he became a winter. Like the other seasons, each year, Jack must hunt and kill the one before him. Gaia's rules are pretty straightforward. Winter kills autumn, autumn kills summer, summer kills spring, and spring kills winter. Which means that Jack kills Amber, Amber kills Julio, Julio kills Fleur, and Fleur kills Jack. They die, they train, they hunt. But when Jack and Fleur, winter and spring, fall for each other against all odds, the true brutality of their eternal lives becomes all too personal and all too painful. And Fleur is on the brink of being purged. Forever. Unless they can come up with a plan to stop the cycle. When the four seasons unite, risking immortality for a chance at love and to reclaim their free will, their cross-country escape brings them to a place where they must defend each other against a creator who seeks to destroy them all. I've never read any of her works before, and full disclosure, this is a YA, which stands for a young adult novel. And it reeks of YA, which there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you don't like YA, you won't like this. Now, I also personally didn't pick this book out, and I'm not sure I would have picked it out from a bookstore either. Just reading that little tidbit, it sounds really interesting, but I probably would have put it back on the shelf. Sounds cool, but not sure if it would be my thing. Honestly though, I didn't even read the blurb before I started reading the book. The only information I had about the book was this. Four teens who had been turned into immortal seasons must escape the cycle of violence they're trapped in when winter and spring fall in love in this high-stakes fantasy duology. I mean, I am glad I got to read it. It was a pretty simple, quick read for me. There's roughly 460 to 80 pages. I don't quite recall the exact number at the moment. And I did enjoy it. I cried a bit at some sad parts and became invested in the characters and content warning, there's death and a lot of it. I gave it three stars and here's why. It was an interesting take on humanizing the seasons. We get two different viewpoints, Jack and Fleur, and the books revolve around choices and fear, and each character has been brought to this point by the choices they've made, whether others agreed with them or not, and sometimes the choices weren't in favor of our protagonist. I will say that Fleur and her lack of choices in life really bring home the choices she does make when it's time, and one of the main focuses throughout the entire book is death, capital D. There is even a content warning at the beginning, and this starts off early on. I'm serious. Personally, I didn't feel upset or triggered by anything, only just jarred at things at times, but that might not be the case for someone else. The best way I can probably think of it is, like, think the Hunger Games, but with a twist. I was explaining, aka talking it through with my friend, and she seemed overwhelmed with the info. She wasn't reading it, just being my soundboard as I talked it out as to what I'd read thus far, she said something along the lines of, it seemed like someone had a lot of ideas and just put it all in, whether it made sense or not. I tried to express that in-world it was explained, and while some things weren't as clear as others, it's in-world logic worked. Basically, it takes a lot of different aspects of genre and hodgepodges them together. 
It can be a bit messy at times. There is a lot going on world building and rules of magic wise. There's three parts to the book, so each part has its own focus and goals to get through till the next part, which I thought was good. A bit of a spoiler, but not really. It's something else I found interesting about the book. There's a whole host of other seasons. It's not just these four kids. The seasons are regioned off, so I'm not sure exactly how many regions there are, but these kids aren't the only four. There's a bunch of different winters and springs and summers and autumns, and they aren't allowed to interact with each other. Now, okay, they're allowed, like a winter is allowed to interact with a winter and a spring with spring and summer with summer and autumn with autumn, of course, but they're not allowed to interact with a different season, excluding, of course, hunting and killing them. Which is obviously a huge issue. You have these children out here going by the rules, only coming in contact with another season to kill it. Year after year after year. If seasons do interact in manners that don't jive with these rules, they get brought in for reconditioning. You'll have to read the book to find out what that entails. One of the other parts about the book that I thought was interesting was how much trust was needed. And... I'm trying to figure out how the best way to say it without spoiling anything, but Jack doesn't trust a lot of people, and he really needs to be able to trust people so that he can succeed in his goal. And there's other trust and fear. There's the fear of trust too, I guess. But also there's just fear, and a big part of it is facing your fears for each of the characters. There's a lot of characters that I've not mentioned, by the way. Because, and I don't want to spoil anything, but for each of our four seasons that we follow, they have a friend. Or, well, I guess I'm going to call them a friend. They have their own companion. Sure, that's the word I'm going to use. That is just as important to their story and who they are as a character than not. Because that's one of the choices that they had. And as you read the story, you get to learn each person's choices and how they affect everything else. And one of the important bits is trusting the others. And it's really difficult since they've spent their entire second lives, basically, not trusting other seasons. Pretty much their companion's the only person they've trusted. And so it takes a lot to be able to trust someone. There is a ranking system that I don't feel is completely explained, but I'll do my best here. You can increase your rankings as a season by lasting longer than you should, and that means hiding and running from the other season hunting them, and also killing the season they were hunting sooner rather than later. If your rankings are good enough, they can be given a promotion and be able to move to another region, or in some cases can be promoted to a guard, which is something else I'm not going to spoil for you. However... If they aren't doing well, they fall in the rankings, and if they fall below the red line, they can be purged. And if they're purged, that's it. They're dead. For real. Forever. But overall, I did enjoy it for what it was. Don't just take my word for it either. Feel free to go check it out. You might love it. You might hate it. You might be completely indifferent to it. If you have read it, let me know what you thought. Oh, also... The author has stated that there will be a sequel in 2021. If you're interested in purchasing any of the books I've mentioned, down in the description box, I've included a link to a website, IndieBound, which has a bookshop finder. It's where you can find local independent bookstores. Also down below, I've included a social media link to each author I've mentioned today. That's all I have to say on the matter. And don't worry, next week Travis will be back for our next DigiTrash. We are so looking forward to talking about it. Because the last episode we watched, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but we have a lot to say. Well, let's just say it gives us a bit of hope. On our website, EssentialNerds.com, we do post blogs, and in them we have talking points that we address during our podcast. That's if you want a sneak peek, of course. Sometimes we expand on stuff, and other times we just leave it a little tidbit for things that we want to talk about later on in the podcast. So you can get a little idea of what we have to say. That's all I have to say on the matter. Thanks for checking out this book with me. This has been Riss, and my favorite fruit is a pineapple. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Essential Nerds. 
If you enjoyed these shenanigans, leave a comment, give us a like, hit subscribe, and don't forget to tell your friends and your barista.